Hey there, business talk with Tom and Brett and our little coffee. And I think Tom's probably got his tea or something. Um, a lot of times out in the forums, there's there's people talking about what they make and how much how much they're bringing in on an annual revenue basis. And Tom and I were talking about this this morning. And you know, how much money are you making, or how much money are you shuffling? And yes. that's the big thing when you think about that, right, Tom? Yeah, there's there's this overselling of it. You got to be seven figures, eight figures, whatever that number is. Mm -hmm. But honestly, you've watched companies. And if you pay attention to the news, you'll go, how'd a company that was doing $20 million a year go out of business or $50 million a year? <laughs> I've worked for those companies. I know exactly how they go out of business. And it really comes down to they weren't making money. They were shuffling right. money. And this is just a misconception in business. I see a lot. It's also not to get too off topic, but when someone starts raging about a company and not paying taxes on some reason, it's because there's a lot of nuance to the way business works. And I'm going to specifically address it, how it works in America, but it really comes down to your profit margins. Right. And you have all the money that comes in. You can have $20 million a year coming in, but if you're spending $21 million a year, this is how sometimes companies will say we had a loss. And you're like, but you somehow seem to be selling a lot of your product or services, but how do you have a loss? And it really comes down to the money going out. Now, the way the tax system here in the United States, generally speaking, without getting overly detailed in it, they tax you on what's left over on your profit. Right. But that's the part we really want to talk about, though, is are you profitable? This right. Is, oh, absolutely. Yeah. This is the part that really what it comes down to. I've seen so many people start bragging or say, oh, you're only doing this much here. I'm like, but I'm doing it on this margin. And mm -hmm. that's really what you have to focus on. If you run a lot of hardware through your company, you can make the company look really big. This is where we fall a little bit in between. And me and Brett were talking about this, and maybe this is a future topic where we discuss why we don't bother trying to run every piece of hardware through our company. <laughs> we work a lot with clients who just decide they're going to, hey, I'm just going to buy it myself. We're fine right. with that. We actually offer both scenarios for our clients. We have clients that are like, hey, I don't want to deal with any of this. I'm going to pay you to deal with it. Right. top to bottom, or we have clients that say, you know what? I'm going to buy the hardware myself because I know exactly what Dell server I want. I know exactly which laptop I want. I know which exact model and part number to buy. And we are perfectly fine in both of these scenarios, but yes, we are. this makes a huge difference when it comes to what your revenues look like. And if you're focused only on getting that annual revenue up. And this was kind of a sad story. I had a friend who that's the, pretty much was locked in his head. He wanted to get a pseudo friend, I will say, um, really get that revenue number up all the time. And that was his bragging point. I'm at 2 million, 3 million, 4 million a year. He did this pretty quickly with his company only a couple of years. And he was bankrupt by year five because he was still losing almost a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars a year. He started with some initial seed money and you know, they sometimes refer to it as your burn rate. If every year you lose a little, what's your burn rate? Well, you keep burning until you hopefully hit a point where you start making money. But one of the things that we take the time to do here, me and Brett have talked a lot about process, is document all the yeah. money ingress and transaction processing and things like that. And, you know, it's always something you need to keep your eye on and then focus on it. One of the things, as we've dropped some of the people and we've won some big contracts, I've talked about this before, where someone says, I'm going to buy the hardware. Well, my people that were bidding against me, the other competing IT firms wouldn't do that. So in some ways, I ended up making substantially more than them because we focused on the margin for it. We focused on leveraging our skill set and leveraging our knowledge for money because that's mm -hmm. just a better way to do it if you are trying to just leverage making margin on product one you can end up you know looking like a bigger company but in the end that's always a race to the bottom because people figure out the prices and i know some places are supposed to be channel partner only but they will cut out your margins and things like that it's kind right. of a pain but my point in all of this is really keeping your eye on the ball in terms of your profitability if you're not thinking about it that way you're just churning money and that is something that i've run into so many people that they just are trying to get to these higher revenue numbers mm -hmm. without really taking a concise look at do you make money at what you do because if you don't start with that those higher revenue numbers are completely irrelevant because you're just bleeding money all the time <laughs> Well, yeah, it's it's about I think it's about efficiencies, right? We got to become efficient in how we do things. Pe we we bid out projects every day, and most of those projects we win because we come in at a competitive rate. But are we losing money? Absolutely not. 
and and we we because we become efficient in how we do things from our contractors to the to the um, products that we we are supplying to to every little aspect of a project we're efficient so we can come in at a better rate we give them higher level of service higher quality product at a better rate and still continue to make money we're not trying to sell pie in the sky but what we're doing is we're selling efficiency Yes. And, but I'll admit, and there's definitely a couple of things we, well, I'm not saying we didn't even bid on. And this was a funny one that Brett took a phone call for that the, <laughs> what they wanted, because we do like a co-managed IT services offering. And basically someone was reselling, you know, we, we have tools that we buy. There's minimum buy into these tools. Mm -hmm. And so smaller companies may want to buy them from us because they can't meet the minimums to buy direct. And this is fine. We'll work on different things that we provide value. But what we won't do is mark them up almost 0% just to get those numbers up. And it turns out they were working with an IT company that we knew we know what these products cost. And we're like, they're selling to you basically at the cost. There's no point in us yeah. doing that. We're not, we're not money shufflers. Undoubtedly, the other IT company was doing it just to get their numbers up. And of course, why are they calling us? Because when there's no margin in something you're selling, they're like, yeah, they don't answer the phone. They don't like talking to us. They don't like doing anything other than sending us the bill for the tools we buy from, but they're no help at all in configuring it. I'm like, well, you're, they're giving to you everything at cost to get their numbers up or right. whatever their goal is. I don't know the other IT company's internal goals for this, but I do know that selling things at no margin is something we said we're not going to do. And they said, well, we don't really want to put margin on it. I said, then great. You can call us for consulting if you need to and keep yeah. buying the product from the other guy because we're not selling to you at that price because that is just basically, you know, cost plus 1% is what they were doing. 1%. Right. Any processing I check? remember that. That was, that, that was, that boggled my mind how this company was able to do that. And, and, and that client was, was frustrated with the level of service, but ultimately stayed with them to, because, but yeah, they still continue to call us and yeah. ask us questions when the real, you know, rubber meets the road. Um, yeah. You talked a lot about pricing for the future. And you say that you've, we, I think we talked about that in a couple of videos previous about pricing for the future. And that's what we've done because we're not here to just have the staff we have. We're here to grow the staff we have and to be able to assist and help more people. We have the price for the future for that. Our margin accounts for that. Yeah. And this is something you have to really take into consideration. You're doing a disservice by it's this weird concept that people have. I need to give them the cheapest option. That's my business plan was just to do it cheaper than the other person. And I'm like, no, at some point you're doing a disservice because you're burning yourself out. You're just shuffling the money to try to build up this big revenue number. But if you didn't build it at margin, you're not thinking about the mm -hmm. margins you build on each one of those. At some point, you're not going to be able to service the client. You're not going to be able to hire that next technician. You're not going to be hired for more technicians to put in place. You're not going to mentally want to give that client good service because you're going to go, what do you mean you want more service out of me? I gave you the cheapest deal. I'm making like 1% on you. At some point, right. I don't feel like servicing it. And it's one of those things. I mean, generally speaking, even as a business owner myself, you know, outside of tech services, which obviously we perform, other services I need, I'm not looking necessarily for the lowest bidder. I'm looking for the best value. I'm looking for someone right. who's going to be responsive. And this goes directly to a construction project I'm working on right now. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I said, Hey, I'm not looking for the cheapest. I already know the cheapest guy may or may not show up. I need someone who's going to show up. I need someone who's going to do the work properly. That's the part that's mattered for each Absolutely. step of the way for my new studio build. <laughs> Absolutely. We've had fun with that one too, haven't we? Yep. Yep. But uh, yeah, that's just our thoughts for today. Think about your margin. Don't just think and look at how do you get to some number? Always think of, do you get to that number? profitably because you can right. do $10 million a year and still go out of business next year because you are spending 10 million point one or even 12 million a year because you had 2 million <laughs> in seed money. And boom, after year one, you burned through all of the seed money or capital. You had to start the business. And uh, unless you have the fairy godmother of venture capital just dropping money on you yeah. uh, for a bad idea, which is weird. That's a Silicon Valley thing. Don't it does happen sometimes does happen. at some point though. The, it has to stop and you go, can this be a profitable venture? And if you're thinking about that at the very beginning, you're in a better position later before you're deep, deep in a hole of, I'm turning all this money and moving all these parts and working 70 hours a week, but I, I could have made more money in the private sector. Yes, you didn't think about margin. So those are my thoughts yeah. for today, me and Brett, because um, by the way, we're making money. We we did our P&L and uh, turns out we're profitable. We, we lost some money last yeah. month. We made money this month and that's the ups and downs of it. But the overall for the year is looking really good. It's here yep. in our final year end. We're thinking about it. And uh, that little chart I made, leave some comments down below if you'd like to see me do a video on how I process uh, money in, in and out of the company. I can definitely share that if someone's interested. Let me know. Mm -hmm. All right.
It's time to make money, not just shuffle it, right? Yep, absolutely. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you. And uh, thank you for listening to my rant. And <laughs> let yeah. me know what else you guys want to hear on this topics. Thanks. Have a good one.